on the floor and then 90. Uh, then we transferred her down to the ICU. It went down to 70 and then 65. But she was perfectly comfortable. Her respiratory rate was 20. Um, her heart rate was 80. And so we did, certainly did not want to intubate her. So we put her on high flow nasal cannula um, for about 24 hours. And she required, originally we were at 20 liters per minute uh, and 70% FiO2. And then we went up, eventually ending up on 100% FiO2 uh, and 30 liters per minute. And her PF ratio down 65. Uh, so we put her on BiPAP at that point. Um, a lot of these patients really benefit from PEEP, and the problem with high flow is it mainly only gives you two or three of PEEP, which is not enough for some of these patients. So uh, we put her on BiPAP. We used the Puritan Bennett 840 ventilator, 940 ventilator on non-invasive mode, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, that way it's a closed circuit. Um, and we put her on pressure support ventilation, uh, 12 over five. Uh, and we're able to get her down to 60% FiO2, and she's been on that for about 24 hours. Her PF ratio went up to 125 on that. She, her gases showed a PO2 of 75 on 60% FiO2, um, and she was very comfortable. So this morning we took her off the BiPAP and put her back on high flow to give her a break from the uh, BiPAP mask. Um, and her PF ratio drifted down a little bit, but not as bad uh, as it had been. Uh, we've been aggressively diuresing her with a Lasix drip uh, to get her drier. Her chest x-ray looks better. And so uh, we're sort of intermittently using BiPAP and high flow to keep from uh, intubating her. So um, right now she has a respiratory rate between 12 and 20. Uh, her O2 sat is 97%. Uh, she's on 60% FiO2, 12 over 5 on the BiPAP. So um, we're going to go in the room and I'll show you how the setup works uh, right now. Okay. Can I ask you a question, Dr. Sure. Keeney? Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned that you're using BiPAP on a ventilator. Can you specify which ventilator you're using? So we're using the 940, but this can also be done with the 840. And at the, when you first set the ventilator up, it asks you invasive or non-invasive. So you go to non-invasive mode, so it'll compensate for the leak, um, and then pressure support ventilation, so then you do the same settings as you would on a BiPAP machine. So an inspiratory pressure and an expiratory pressure and an FiO2, depending on what you need. Okay, thank you. And when you are, when the patients are on BiPAP, are you using any kind of mask over the patient's BiPAP mask? We are not um, because we are, we have taped up the pop-off port uh, in the middle and um, especially on pressure support, the patient is synchronous with the ventilator. So there's not a lot of air getting out. The little bit that may leak is from the side of the mask, which I'll uh, show you in a second. So I'm not sure that a mask would be very helpful, but the patient is in a negative pressure room uh, and we wear a face shield and N95 mask uh, when we go in there. Uh, it's usual as well as gowns and gloves, of course. Um, and so uh, uh, I feel safe doing that. Okay. And how about with the, the high flow nasal cannula? When the patients are on high flow, do you recommend a surgical mask over the patient? Yes. So in that situation, we put a surgical mask over the high flow. And again, we would have the N95 and the face mask. Uh, and as I think we mentioned in one of the conferences, uh, patient coughing has four times as much, 400 times as much uh, nebulization as with a high flow at 30 liters per minute. So especially if you're in a negative pressure room and you have an N95 face mask, uh, you're safe in that situation. Okay, great. And do you have a limit for your high flow nasal cannula in terms of liters per minute flow? So we have sort of tried to compromise and have said we're not going to use more than 30 liters per minute. It probably is safer to use more than that, but uh, just to uh, sort of reach a compromise, uh, we've decided uh, at Highland anyway that we're going to limit it to 30 liters per minute. And this is true at a number of other hospitals as well. Okay. And is your routine practice to try and have patients self-prone when they are on high flow or even BiPAP? Absolutely. And uh, it, it's very easy when a patient is intubated, paralyzed, it takes five people to prone them. But when they're, when they're on their own on high flow, you just uh, lean, in, lean in and say, go, go roll over on your stomach and they prone themselves. So it's super easy and that's gonna help oxygenation quite a bit. And we've had a patient here that we used a combination of high flow and self proning, a never required intubation despite uh, PF ratios below 100 for several days. Okay, all right, thank you.